So the next piece of this module is going to be to talk about risk assessment. So I strongly advise you start risk assessment much earlier in the design process than this. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't done it to this point, you really have to do it now. And if you did it earlier on, this is a good time to update it. I recommend you start doing risk assessment around the specification development phase. As soon as you've gotten through project identification, you really understand the problem you're going to solve, you'll start to see some of the risks associated with the possible solutions. And you can really try and address some of those early on in the process and design them away. So by the time you get to this point, they're already accounted for. But again, if you haven't done that, you have to do it by this point in the project. So in risk assessment, what you're really trying to do is to consider all the possible ways that your project could fail and compile them into a failure mode and effect analysis, or an FMEA. Now there are other ways of doing risk assessment, but this is by far the most common way and the one that would be understood in almost every industry. All of your risk assessment activities or risk analysis activities should be done as a team. So going through and writing down risks individually or looking at risks by yourself very rarely will lead to a very comprehensive list. But if you get your whole team together, including the stakeholders, and think about what are the things that could go wrong, as one person suggests an idea, someone else will build upon it, and that will snowball so that you'll really start to get a comprehensive list of all the things that could happen. Now teaching you how to do an FMEA is beyond the scope of this module, but I will point you out to the American Society of Qualities website listed here on the slide. Um, they provide some really useful tools and some frameworks for doing this. So taking that into mind and continuing on, um, we'll look at an example. Now the Camp Riley sailboat team didn't have a risk assessment yet that they were able to show, but I can show you the sort of format of an FMEA. So this is from the EPICS design process site, but you'll see we'll have a process function and we number these. So in this case, all of these are based on the same function. That is a, of a timer. And then you'll look at the potential failure modes for each one. So you'll say, okay, maybe the timer is running too fast or it's outputting the incorrect time. Those are some different things that could go wrong. So failure mode is simply just what could happen that would be a problem. And then there'll be an effect of that failure mode. So if the time is running too fast, then the time indicated would be inaccurate. So you can see you have a, a failure mode that leads to an effect. You'll have a severity score for that effect. And those can be done in different ways, typically on a zero to 10 scale. And then you'll have a cause of that failure. So this failure occurred um, because of a configuration drift. You'll indicate the occurrence of that. That would be how likely is it to occur. And then you'll look at what are our current process controls um, in this case, we'd say there are none. We'd have a detection score. So a detection would say, how likely are we to find this before the failure effect occurs? And the multiplication of those three give you a risk score. So that risk score is used to evaluate what are the most important risks and what are the ones that I can worry less about. And those important risks, you'll usually set a threshold. Any of them above that threshold you're going to want to do some kind of process control to avoid that happening. So those process controls typically would reduce either the occurrence, which is the likelihood of it happening, or the ability to detect it before it happens. Most of the time, the severity is out of your control. The severity of that failure is what it is. But you want to try and make high severity problems very unlikely to occur based on your design. So to recap on risk assessment, you really need to do some form of risk assessment, preferably an FMEA, to determine all the possible hazards of your project and to give them relative rankings so you know which ones are the most important. Your risk assessment activities really should be team-driven, not individual. And the risk scores you get out of those FMEA type activities will really lead to what kind of controls in the design and what kind of testing do you need to run subsequent to the risk analysis. So now being your turn, uh, I want you to write a, a short FMEA listing the severity, the occurrence, and the detection for one small subcomponent of your project. Scope this small enough that you only have a handful of items that you can think of, maybe four to five. And then go back and review your team's risk assessment activities. Think about the process that you took to get there or that your previous teammates took to get there. Was every team member's voice heard? Were all the stakeholders taken into account? Did everybody really come to the table and participate? And if not, how could you as a leader help to improve that in the process? 
and then compare your FMEA fragment for that little subcomponent back to any description you have for risk assessment activities in your design document and update them as necessary.